Today, I'm excited to show you a new AI editing software that's throwing their hat in the ring to help wedding photographers with our workflow. Polar Next. I'm Brenda Bergreen, a professional wedding photographer since 2011, and I'm a writer and reviewer for ShotKit. Polar Next has a unique AI editing process that mimics your edits in real time and applies those edits to your wedding gallery, helping to expedite your workflow with your unique editing style. If you're like me, you're always trying to find the best tools for making your business more efficient and profitable without sacrificing the quality and personal touch that we photographers bring to our work. So here in a minute, we're going to walk through using Polar Next to edit a full wedding. But first, a little preview on what we're going to learn. Polar Next uses super cool AI learning that's called reference edits. Basically, you make edits to a handful of reference images from various lighting scenarios, which the AI then uses to edit the rest of your images. Then, as it's editing, you can create more reference edits and watch AI make updates to your AI style in real time. This is super unique. Most AI editing tools that I've used will integrate your tweaks to AI edited photos into your AI style for future projects, but Polar Next is doing this in real time. Now, Polar Next is still in beta, so things aren't running perfectly yet, as we might see in the walkthrough. Uh, this is to be expected when a software is still in development. And that's the point of beta. The company will learn from what's working and what isn't and make adjustments. Now, while there are a few glitches from being in beta, Polar Next is extremely intuitive, fast, and easy to use. It's like having all of Lightroom right in the app, so it feels like you're making edits in Lightroom, but you're in Polar Next, where the AI is learning your editing style. I'm very impressed with how innovative Polar Next is and think it will soon be a great option for wedding photographers. So let's dive in and check out the program to show you what I love and where I think there's still room for improvement. So the first thing to note is that this is a web-based editing software that requires Google Chrome. However, we don't have to type this URL every time we want to use it. We can simply install what's known as a PWA, Progressive Web App, uh, in order to have an app for Polar Next on our desktop. So we see this option here right after we log in. So we'll go ahead and install the desktop app. And it installs us right here on our computer and it gives us our little shortcut on our toolbar. So next I'm going to go to projects and create a new project. So you can see I can select a folder or drag and drop. I'm just going to drag and drop my new project in there. It asks my permission to save edits. So I'm going to give permission. And then it's going to have me select AI style. So I can create a new style, which is what we're going to do. Or I could use a polar pre-trained AI style, which is what you saw on that explore page when I opened the app or I could import a .style file. So if I was working with another photographer on a project and we wanted to make sure we had the same editing style, they could send me their style file and I could use that, which is pretty cool. And then once I've edited a project, I will also see the option to use a style from a previous project. So I'm going to hit continue and it's going to import my photos. And you see that it's importing photos pretty quickly. So one thing to note while we're waiting is that training data is stored locally on our device. Nothing is uploaded to the cloud. So Polar Next is going to update a dot catalog and a dot style file in the project folder on our device. Our next step is going to be to create reference edits. So AI is going to select up to 20 images in our case, it looks like it's selected 19, and these are gonna be based on different lighting conditions so that the AI can learn our editing style. And what we're going to do after we edit a photo is mark it here in the upper right to mark it as a reference edit. And you can see that it's telling us that AI will use this edit to improve similar photos. So we can also import user presets and have that as a starting point. So I'm going to import a Lightroom preset Oh, it's right there. So it's updating my photos with that preset. So we can click on or off this suggested edits toggle here in order to see more of our photos. Uh, so that's kind of a cool feature. You can see my star ratings here were brought in from Culling and Photo Mechanic. But let's just go ahead and edit some suggested photos 
to see how using this editing software works. So here's this photo. It looks like it's already cropped and straightened. And so we're gonna adjust the color temperature and check the exposure. It looks like it's crushing the highlights. So let's bring that back. And the slider is a little sensitive. So what I discovered is I can also use my up and down arrow keys in order to um, move the slider, which is something I like to do in Lightroom. And so we're just making this photo look exactly how we want it to look since that's how the program is going to know what we want. And so then once we've got those edits dialed, we'll go up to this upper right corner and mark it as a reference edit. And so then we can use our right arrow to just go to the next image. Let's go over to this photo because this would make a great black and white image. So in order to make a black and white, I'm going to select the monochrome color profile and then I'm going to edit the image and mark it as a reference edit. So the AI is going to learn the black and white adjustments for similar lighting conditions and it'll apply those changes only to images with similar lighting conditions though. So we'll be able to see that in the edit how it did uh, matching with similar lighting conditions. Awesome, so let's um, go mark that as a reference edit. And then one thing that I thought was super cool is you can click on that keyboard down here and it shows you all of your shortcuts. So let's say we wanted to compare the before and after to see how our edits are looking. We can do that, which is a super cool feature. I'm gonna create a linear gradient filter here and what I learned about using this is that in Lightroom normally I would rotate it from the middle so I thought this was a glitch initially like a beta glitch but really it's just like a different way to use a filter so you grab it from the bottom to rotate it instead um, so that's that's fine it just takes some getting used to uh, I'm just glad that I uh, figured out how to do it and it then seems to work properly. Cool, so I like how that looks and I will go ahead and mark it as a reference edit. So remember, it's important to make sure that our edits are exactly to our liking before we mark them as reference and that's how the AI is going to learn our style. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the rest of these 19 images and then we will uh, pick back up on how it processes and learns from me. So I will see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see by the fact that these are all marked purple, that they're all marked as reference edits. We're going to click on this finish AI style setup. And it's going to start processing and editing our photos. And you can see it's already making edits. edits. You can see my star ratings are still there. Um, and this is where it's gonna get fun because we're gonna be able to make changes as we go and let the AI know how it's doing. Um, it's editing pretty fast here. So we'll go in and if an edit doesn't look right, we're going to open it, re-edit it, and then mark it as an, another reference edit. And then AI will make edits to similar images in real time. So you can see this image doesn't look right. The temperature is like super blue, contrast is off. Okay, so now up at the top, if we like how that looks, up at the top you can see that it's currently locked the edit, which is gonna prevent AI from editing this photo again. But what we wanna do is actually mark this as a reference edit so that AI uses this to edit similar photos. So you can see that it kind of updated the photos right next to it um, based on those edits that we made. So I'm gonna make this another monochrome and just edit it to how I want it to look. And then when we mark it as a reference image, it's going to make some other images black and white based on those lighting conditions. So if you're gonna have that black and white setting based on an, a particular image, it's gonna update other images as well. 
And so if you didn't want, so that looks fine to me, but if you didn't want that to happen, you would not want to mark it as a reference edit. Let's go to grid view and just kind of like check everything out here. And let's find another image that we want to work on. So let's go ahead and edit this photo since these are some tough lighting conditions. She's in the sun and he's in the shade. And so we want to expose for her and make her look good while having the context of him. So I'm just kind of adjusting my whites and blacks. Play with my color temperature so it looks right. And then let's create a mask. Let's have it grab the background. Just bring that contrast down a little bit. A little more highlights. And then let's, let's like how that looks and go ahead and mark it as a reference edit. And then we see that it's automatically updating some of these other photos based on that photo. But this photo is actually like kind of different lighting conditions because now he's my subject. So I'd probably go ahead and brighten it up a little bit. So we can go in and edit more images until we're satisfied. And how the program works is that the more reference edits I make, the better Polar Next will get at learning my style. So I can keep tweaking images, assigning reference edits on this wedding. And then when I go to use th this style on my next project, it'll be more accurate. So let's just say we've edited all our photos and we like how everything looks. We'll go ahead and export by clicking export, we'll choose our settings. We can select all images or one images and go ahead and select go. Let site edit files, give it permission and it's exporting the folder. Okay, let's break it down. Creating the reference edit edits was pretty easy. The tool looks a lot like Lightroom just inside of the Polar Next app. So editing was pretty intuitive and easy to use. The graduated filter was the only thing that like took me a minute to figure out just because it was a different way of using it than I'm used to. And it's a little harder to use in my opinion, uh, but once I figured it out, it was just fine. And everything else works pretty much just like Lightroom, which is pretty great. I could spot heal, use background or subject masking. I could make a black and white style. In that one first look lighting scenario where I had uh, she was the subject and then he was the subject, it didn't seem to know that, but that's a, kind of a high ask for it. One thing that I learned through editing was that with the monochrome style, that's really cool if you choose black and white images based on having a certain lighting condition. But for me, it's more of a style choice based on if this image would look good in black and white. And so when it went and then edited other images into black and white, I may not have wanted that to happen. So those are just things to be aware of with Polar Next. So let's talk about some differentiating factors that separates Polar Next from other editing programs out there. The reference edits concept is what really sets Polar Next apart and makes it different from the other AI editing tools that I've seen. I love this idea of adaptive and real-time AI editing. So if I wanna tweak a series of images that were all shot in the same lighting conditions, I can tweak one and it'll automatically update the rest. My experience with other AIs is that they just make the edits and send them along. Uh, you can usually submit your changes to the AI and have it learn your re-edits for next time and it uh, customizes your style. But it's pretty impressive that Polar Next is making those tweaks in real time as you're editing a wedding. The other standout is that Polar Next is creating what could be a standalone product independent of other editing tools. In theory, you could use Polar Next without needing tools like Lightroom or Capture One. Anyway, before we could ditch Lightroom, we would need some other things. Like I love in Lightroom, the folder management and how I can create collections and find sample photos or update por portfolios. I really use collections a lot. 
And so I think Polar Next would need to develop similar things in order to compete with Lightroom, but the concept is there and I think it's pretty cool. Let's talk about the ease of the trial. So the first thing that I loved about Polar Next is how easy it was to get started and try it out. I love, instead of having to upload a ton of images, I was able to just try it out on one wedding and see how it went. The interface is almost like they built Lightroom inside of the app. So if you're a Lightroom user, it's extremely intuitive and fast with just a few differences that uh, I eventually figured out. So now let's talk about pricing. Polar Next offers various pricing plans. So you can pay as you go for about five cents an image exported, meaning they only charge you when you export a photo not to edit it. Um, or you could do monthly or yearly subscriptions for unlimited edits and exports. So this is pretty competitive pricing to the other AI software out there. And they currently have a Founders Unlimited pricing for their first 500 subscribers, so a discounted price on that unlimited pricing for the first 500 subscribers. As I was saying before, you could technically eventually use Polar Next without other editing tools, which would thus eliminate those monthly costs. If you do their pay as you go option, you could pay only when exporting for a client, which would e eliminate monthly overhead. And then you only pay money when you actually have a paying gig. This seems kind of great for a newer photographer that's not as married to Adobe products and that wants to keep their expenses low. So in conclusion, while I'm as resistant to change as anyone else, Polar Next has some innovative concepts that make it worth considering for your workflow needs. Even with the software not being perfect yet, I essentially edited an entire wedding in an hour, which frees up lots of hours, if not days. I think some photographers are going to be resistant to giving up so much control, but the potential time savings is really hard to ignore. Don't get me wrong. I don't think I'm jumping on the Polar Next Express quite yet. I'm a wedding photographer, a little too married to my current workflow. However, it's important to always keep an eye on new innovation in our industry. So I'll definitely be watching Polar Next as it speeds into this competitive and exciting market. You can try Polar Next for free today using the code SHOTKIT to receive an additional 2,500 free export credits.